All right, boys, welcome back to another video. Nick's Daily here. This is without question the craziest trade I have ever seen in Nick's history. One, because we're getting Carl Anthony Towns, but two, I made a day late. I deleted my Twitter and nobody texted me or told me about this trade. So here we are a day later, me looking up the New York Knicks and we have Cat. I mean, this is just insane, guys. We are trading Julius Randle, Dante DiVincenzo, a 2025 first round pick via Detroit top 13 protected. So that certainly isn't going to convey. And Charlotte receives Daquan Jeffries draft compensation. I mean, I don't really care about what Charlotte gets, but primarily we're focusing on getting Cat and giving up, obviously, Julius Randle and Dante DiVincenzo. I mean, this is just brutal, guys. Like, Dante became one of my favorite players on the team in just his first year. The way he shot the three, his toughness, his physicality, the way he defended, getting in the passing lanes, just cutting. You could tell Dante's a winner. Every team he went to got better and better, whether that be the Warriors, the Bucks, the Knicks. I mean, losing him is just devastating, man. I mean, I'm not going to say I'm more sad to see Dante go than Randall because obviously Julius Randall is a, a multi-time All-NBA player, multi-time All-Star. Like, Julius Randall is very, very good. He's a top 20 player in the league, probably top 15 in the league when he's fully healthy. But it, there's just something about Dante where when I think about the Knicks winning a championship, I just picture him being right there in the picture, like front and center. I mean, this guy was so, so good for us. And he's gone. He's gone just like that. And then Julius Randle, again, guys, what he did last season before the injury, the best ball he's ever played in his career, he was scoring 25 a game, grabbing 10 boards a game, five assists a game, very efficient, just bully ball, getting after it. You can say what you want about Julius Randle. There is plenty that I don't like about him, but the guy wants to win and he's willing to do whatever it takes. If a shot's not falling, he will go to the basket and he will, again, just bully you and he'll be physical. And that's something that the Knicks were missing desperately in the playoffs, especially against Indiana. They just needed somebody next to Brunson that can go out there and make a play and make some shots and just make get a bucket when, when shots are falling. Again, the threes aren't, aren't going. So losing Randall is, it sucks. Like, there's just no other way around it. And the thing about me is whenever a player is a Nick, I just think of them like they've been a Nick their entire life. Like, Randall was drafted by the Lakers and he was with the Pelicans. Dante certainly had been with a couple other teams. But these guys just are, are Knicks to me. So losing players like that, I mean, two, well, Dante wasn't starting coming into the year with the addition of Mikel Bridges, but certainly Julius Randle was starting and now he's just gone. But with that being said, I still actually like this trade for the Knicks. I don't love this trade, don't get me wrong, but I like it because Mitchell Robinson, he has not been able to stay healthy. He's missed not season after season, but he's just missed time after time. He hasn't been available. He hasn't been reliable. So getting Cat. Well, now with Mitch healthy, you can put Mitch at the five, you can put Cat at the four, or you can push, put Cat at the five and bring Mitch off the bench. But basically losing Mitch now to this point would make it a little bit easier just because the center position set. But the question for the Knicks, and I have not watched any videos, I have not done any research. This is just my first reaction. Yes, I'm a day late, so not exactly ideal for you guys because you probably know the Knicks plan for Cat. I have no clue. I will get into that in my next video. But as of right now, I'm just going to go on a limb and say that the Knicks plan to play Cat at the five. But at the same time, all right, let's just let's do this, right? So at the one, Jalen Brunson. At the two, Mikel Bridges. At the three, are we going to go with OG and Anobi? I, I think we actually might play Cat at the four, if I'm being honest. Or, or maybe we start, start Josh Hart at the four and put Cat at the five. But I, I think we legitimately are going to put Cat at the four and and Mitch at the five. Maybe I'm wrong, but obviously Mitch is out until at least December, probably until January. So Kat is going to play the center for now. But when Mitch comes back, that could be actually very, very deadly. Uh, a duo of Mitch and, and Kat. I mean, the Timberwolves were the number one seed in the West with Gobert and with Kat. And maybe I'm wrong in this. Maybe I'm biased, but I think a healthy Mitchell Robinson is better than Rudy Gobert. I mean, Gobert seems to get picked on over and over again. Nobody in, in their right mind. That saying is picking on Mitchell Robinson. Again, a fully healthy Mitch. Even a, a nearly a close to healthy Mitch. I mean, his defense is just insane, bro. And Mitch doesn't just stand under the basket as well. Like he can get out on the perimeter and make it tough. And he's just he's a very versatile defender. So I, I would honestly give this trade. I probably give this trade a B. The upside is through the roof, right? Because I mean, Cat has the potential to be a superstar. He's maybe he's probably the best three-point shooting or shooting big in general it's either him or Dirk. but let's just say he's the best shooting big ever 
And now all of a sudden you have Jalen Brunson going one-on-one -on -one with Cat just waiting in the corner to catch a pass where he's going to make probably half of those open corner threes or just those open jumpers. I mean, Cat is that good. The defense and the mindset is my thing for Cat. Is he going to be... Well, defensively, Cat was actually pretty good last year. I don't, I don't really have an issue with Cat defensively. I think it's just can he handle New York? Can he handle the bright lights? Can he handle being criticized? Because Julius Randle... Look at what he went through. I mean, there was a point where Julius Randle was the most loved guy on the Knicks. And then there was a point where he was the most disliked. Yeah, bad playoff series against the Hawks. I think a lot of people gave him the benefit of the doubt because that team never should have been even probably playing to that point in the playoffs. They overachieved and it was his first time. And they just kind of cut him a break. And then the, the series against the, the, the first playoffs when we got Brunson, it was a, just a bad playoffs in general for Randle, but he was hurt. So, I mean, Randall's had bad stretches too. I mean, Randall, uh, by all means, is a very light guy and it's sad to see him go. But I just think that Cat is a better player. I mean, the, the, my thing with Randall is that his jump shooting just is not great. He's not a good three point shooter. Cat is the best three point shooting big, like I said, of all time. So that means that the upside's great. Also, Cat will go up against the best big on the other team, right? So, for example, Jokic. If the Knicks play against the Nuggets in the finals, Cat will guard Jokic. And they also would have Mitch too, assuming he stays with the Knicks. Maybe they have a plan for him. I don't know. Like I said, there could be a report that came out that said the Knicks are looking to move on from Mitch. We're going to attach uh, Miles McBride with Mitch to get rid of him. Like, I don't, I'm not saying that's a thing, but it could be for all we know, right? Like for all I know. So what the Knicks plan is, I'm going to be researching that. That's my mission for tonight. Saturday night, staying in, not going out to hang out with some friends or anything like that. So I'll just be focusing on that. But um, in terms of like anything else to add, I mean, I still just can't wrap my mind around this. Like we actually traded for Carl Anthony Towns. Yeah, I did talk about in the off season saying that the Knicks are legitimately interested in Cat, and I wouldn't be that shocked if we got him. But also at the same time, I was like, I don't, I don't think that's gonna happen. I'm like, yeah, maybe, maybe, but I was like, probably not, right? And then just a random Friday night, the Knicks make a huge trade. I mean, and we got Mikel Bridges, so now we we trade for Mikel Bridges. And we trade for Carl Anthony Towns. And you have to imagine that both of those moves are basically saying, hey, look, Boston, we now have a premier defender that can switch everything, that can go after Tatum and Brown. And we have the best shooting big. How do you beat the Celtics? You play defense and you make threes. That's how they won the championship. So now the Knicks have, I'm not going to say the two best perimeter defenders in basketball, but two of, well, deep, I would say maybe the most versatile defender in basketball in OG and Anobi. Mikel Bridges is an elite defender. And then Cat, too. Good defender, can shoot. I mean, Cat, when he's on, is legitimately, he's one of the best players in basketball, man. And the only weakness to Cat is kind of going to be, can you win a championship with him? In terms of his ability, I don't think anybody's doubting that. But, I mean, Jalen Brunson, Carl Anthony Towns, Mikel Bridges, OG and Anobi, you know, Josh Hart, I mean, Mitchell Robinson, Miles McBride. That is insane. Like, on paper to me, this is the best Knicks team I have ever seen. And again, I'm going, even 1973, 2000, like, this is the best team on paper that I've ever seen for the Knicks. It is just unbelievably good with Tom Thibodeau, of course. I mean, I just can't wait. I can't wait, guys.